today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about winterizing your irrigation systems and watering, watering components in the landscape. Uh, we've already experienced a little bit of a deep freeze uh, and some cold weather, but if you haven't had a chance yet or if you've forgotten to, you might want to consider doing some things to help winterize your systems. Now in Oklahoma, one of the challenges with actually winterizing your systems is we can go through several periods of dry, warm weather where we actually need to get out and irrigate our landscapes. So those who have in-ground systems have to decide whether or not uh, that needs to be done, um, whether it's designed properly so that it, you, you don't have to worry about freezing during the winter months. In general, throughout Oklahoma, we don't worry too much about freezing of our in-ground systems because um, you know, the, the, the freeze depths aren't that bad. Uh, it's pretty shallow for the most part. And uh, we, haven't, we generally don't experience a lot of problems. However, uh, if you're not real familiar with the system or if you've had problems in the past, you might consider doing some things to help prepare it for the winter months. So for those uh, who have uh, above ground systems, um, like drip irrigation systems and et cetera, um, you know, you should do everything you can to drain those um, before you know, we get some really deep freezes uh, because any moisture within the components can freeze and cause damage and then when you go turn them on in the springtime you end up with geysers or flooding. Um, so in this case here we actually have uh, a system that is uh, kind of can be manually set up. It's uh, hooked up to our drip irrigation system throughout part of the landscape and so we can hook it up to the faucet during the summer months or during dry periods and turn it on. Now this is the backflow preventer device here and all systems should have a backflow preventer on it. Some of them on in-ground systems, generally they're at or below ground level, and so usually they're okay, but if they're exposed uh, to the cold weather, then it's a really good idea to pull them apart, make sure you drain all the water out of them so there's no water within the system, because again, any little bit of water can freeze and expand and cause damage to, the, to it. Um, the other things you can do if you're not real sure if it's above ground you're not really sure how insulated it is, is go ahead and insulate it. You can buy materials at the, the home improvement stores where you can wrap them, some insulating materials, wrap them up and protect them. So anything above ground that might be exposed should be drained and should be protected. Now with your in-ground irrigation systems, a lot of them are designed to have drain valves on them. Sometimes they're manual drain valves and there should be a pit or a box that you can open up and reach in and, and open those up and drain all the water out of them. And so if you have that, you need to make sure that you drain all the water, uh, shut off your water, drain all the, open up the valves, and let all that water drain out uh, so that you don't have any water standing in, in those systems. A lot of systems also have automatic ear, uh, drain valves in them. So if you're not real familiar with it, you may have to poke around in the ground to find out what you have or ask the company that installed it for you. Now some irrigation companies and landscape maintenance companies offer services to winterize your landscape or your irrigation systems. Um, usually what that involves is pressurizing the system with air and making sure that all the water is blown out. Um, I do recommend that you have someone that knows what they're doing to do that for you because if you do it wrong, if you put too much pressure in there, you, again you can damage the components. And finally, your garden hoses. Uh, if you have your garden hoses laying around, um, you know, you need to disconnect those from your faucets, especially if they're connected to the house, so that the water doesn't freeze back into the home. Make sure you drain your hoses real well. And I prefer to actually take them indoors uh, so they're not exposed to the cold weather, even though they may be drained, as well as the sunlight, because eventually they can break down over time. Uh, if you do leave them outside and hanging up even after you've drained them, uh, be sure not to touch them or move them during freezing weather. But if we do have some warm weather, uh, and we go through periods where there is no precipitation, um, it's a good idea to have something available like your garden hoses and sprinklers available to you so you can irrigate your plants through the winter months. Mm -hmm.